In this presentation, I will try to talk about international targets. Risky stratification systems for pirate malignancy have been pro proposed and called TIRATs. There are nearly 20 risk stratification systems. The authors of previous TIRAT systems have come together for a consensus to declare an international TIRAT system. And recently, in 2023, October, they have published a review defining the lexicon for the thyroid nodules. The thyroid lesions are incidentally detected in up to 70% of all population. Most of them are benign. Small malignant nodules are mostly, mostly indolent, but may metastasize to leaf nodes, central zone or lateral zone. Multiparametric ultrasound is becoming the standard of practice for nodule evaluation, which includes B mode, doctor imaging, the microflow imaging recently introduced, contrast enhanced ultrasound, sonar elastography, strain or shear wave, and artificial intelligence methods. The first risk stratification system that has been that has been defined is the ATA guideline, followed by Korea, followed by European TIRATS and American College of Radiology TIRATS systems. I will use this review as a guide with my own examples. The ITIRATS descriptors include the composition, echogenicity, margin, direction of growth, echogenic foci classifications, extraterritorial extension, and the lymphomes. The first one is the composition, which defines the proportion of solid and fluid content of the nodules. The nodules may be solid, predominantly solid, with less than 50% fluid content, predominantly cystic, more than 50% fluid content, or maybe spongy form, which is defined as multiple cystic spaces separated by multiple septations, or they may be pure cysts. These are the examples of solid nodules, a hypoechoic solid nodule when compared to parenchyma, isoechoic solid nodule, or hyperechoic solid nodule. These are the examples of predominantly solid, cystic spaces less than 50%, or predominantly solid lesion with some cystic areas. These are the examples of predominant cystic nodules. This is the solid component. The cystic component is predominant. You see the solid component. There are three solid components in that example. These are the examples for spongy form. The nodules appear like, appear like sponge. The second one is the echogenicity. The nodules are compared to the parenchyma and the muscles. They are, they are called markedly hypoechoic if the echogenicity is less than the anterior muscles. The nodule has a, a less echogenicity than the parenchyma, but not than the muscles. It's called mildly hypoechoic or iso or hypoechoic when compared to the parenchyma. Or they may represent no internal echo. It's called unequal. And here are the examples. You see the nodule here, solid nodule, almost similar echogenicity with the muscles. Another solid nodule, hypoechogenic than the parenchyma, but not than the muscles. An isoechoic nodule and a hyperechoic nodule. The third one is the margin. The margin of the nodule and the parenchyma. It may be irregular, like microlobulation or speculation, discernible but not smooth. Maybe smooth, 
or maybe poorly demarcated, which is called ill-defined. These are three examples of malignant nodules. You see the microlobulations and irregular borders, speculations in that example, irregular and speculated in that example. Or the margins may be smooth or ill-defined. The transitions on the, the normal parenchyma is not discernible. This is a benign example, this is a benign example, and this is a malignant example. You see, it's not a well-defined. The transition zone is not well-defined. The fourth one is the direction of growth, which is a reliable finding in all tyrant systems and in, proposed in i tyrants as well, taller than white. This is a non-parallel orientation. The anterior posterior diameter is greater than the lateral medial diameter or wider than tall. This is a taller than white example, taller than white. And this is a wider than tall example. The fifth one is the echogenic fossil ion calcifications. Contained echogenic fossil ion micro calcifications are defined as less than one millimeter hyperechoic fossil within solid components. Macro calcifications are more than one millimeter with posterior acoustic shadow. The calcifications may be peripheral, as curved linear hyperechoic line completely or incomplete surrounding the model. And echogenic fossil with prometheal artifact is another group. These are two malignant examples. You see, solid components include scattered hyperequate foci with less than one millimeter diameter in both examples. This is the macro classification with acoustic shadowing in another one, and this is a benign nodule, this is a malignant nodule. Two examples of peripheral classifications in fact, complete rim with classification. This is an incomplete rim. And also, you see the speculations here. This is a malignant nodule. Echogenic fossa with comet tail artifacts are commonly seen in colloidal nodules or the nodules containing fibrin deposits. These are tiny reflectors with comet tail or tiny reverberation artifacts in the posterior areas of the bright reflectors. But in some conditions, some micro classifications may represent reverberation artifacts. So we should be careful. The sixth one is the extratyridial extension, which may be gross. That means the nodule extends through the capsule with frank invasion of the adjacent tissues, which, which is 100% malignant. The loss of echogenic borders, but not apparent invasion of the adjacent tissues, is called suspicious extraterritorial extension. The nodule touches the border, but the echogenic capsule remains intact, can be visible, so it's called capsule contact. This is the frank invasion of that nodule in the peritoridal area. This is a follicular carcinoma example that invaded the jugular way. The next one is the leaf node. A leaf node with at least one of these features is called suspicious. The parameters are cystic areas, hyperechoic foci, peripheral chaotic or diffusely increased vascularity, issue with thyroid-like echo texture. This is a very reliable finding with up to 100% risk of malignancy. You know, but none of the suspicious, suspicious features exist, but hilum is invisible or the leaf one is round in shape. So it's called indeterminate, no suspicious feature, ovoid shape and or the hilum is visible, it's called 
non-suspicious lymphoma. Here are some examples. This is the primary you see with echogenic foci and the lymph node in the lateral compartment, cystic septated component. Another one, septated cystic component, and the content is almost similar to the primary. So this is 100% a reliable finding for a metastatic propylary carcinoma. These are two examples. This is a benign nodule, and this is an involved nodule. You see, the echogenicity is brighter, and there are some hyperechoic foci. For selection of the nodules for biopsy, we need to, to use tyrants, European, American, or the others. But which one? There are some meta-analysis comparing the sensitivity and specificity of previous tyrants systems. The sensitivity of a tyrants 5 depends to 55 to 80%. If we include Tyras 4 and 5, sensitivity is high. It's a good finding. If you can say Tyras 5, the specificity is nearly or over 90%. But can we include 4 to 5? The specificity drops to 50s. This is another good meta-analysis for unnecessary thyroid biopsy rates of the systems. In comparison, you see the ACR thyroids, 25% unnecessary thyroid nodule biopsy rate. The other guideline almost 50, almost half. The European one is 38, Korean is 54%. And total, 40% of the nodules undergoing biopsy is unnecessary, regardless of the risk stratification system they are using. So we still need some more uh, studies and good classification systems. In conclusion, multiparametric ultrasound is the method of choice for nodule and lymph node evaluation. Tyras is necessary for standardization and for the nodules that find the respiration indication, decision. And meanwhile, we will be waiting for the ITIRAS verification results. On the other hand, fine needle aspiration of suspicious leaf folds, particularly in the lateral compartment, is uh, necessary if we have suspicion, which should include cytology and biochemistry of the thyroglobulin or and or calcitonin washout procedure. Thank you for your attention.